The New York Times, Washington Post, and NBC News are all locking back erroneous reporting on former President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani. All three of those media outlets issued retractions to the stories, which claimed the FBI had warned Rudy Giuliani he was the target of a Russia disinformation campaign. Giuliani himself demanding to see the sources for that. He tweeted, where did the original false information come from? Joe Concha is a media and politics columnist for The Hill and a Fox News contributor. Joe, great to see you on this fine Monday. So first of all, where did the sources come from and how do you walk back this story? I mean, is it retraction? I know they're doing it, but that's putting a really big cat in a really small bag. Part of the retraction, Harris, and I love that analogy, by the way, should be, okay, here is the source that burned us. If you're the New York Times, the Washington Post, NBC News, you were fed false information by somebody. Was it somebody, I don't know, former FBI? Was it somebody who is in the Biden Justice Department? Is it somebody who is a former intelligence official who plays a cable news pundit on TV? Who gave you this information? <laughs> if you're so really concerned, seriously, about truth and transparency, you will burn this source. But I'll bet my kids' college fund which is already getting too sizable for my own liking, uh, that that will never, ever happen. And then this source will continue to push false information again and again. And they always seem to be pushing information, or these news organizations always seem to be reporting news that's false towards conservatives and Republicans. I want to see three major news organizations just once have a story that's wrong about a Democrat. We never seem to see that now, do we? But it's at high levels. You know what I'm saying? And, and the answer to your question is no, but, and, and the audience knows it because they see these publications are not going after the other side like they are the conservative side. But, you know, first it was former President Trump um, with, no, actually, there weren't bounties on the heads of American soldiers. With Yeah, I mean, how do you get something like that wrong when even Senator Cotton, who was on my program just a little while ago when that story was breaking, said, I personally saw the intelligence. There was no there there. Everybody saw it. So how do they do this and get away with it? Harris, they get it wrong because they believe what they want to believe. They so desperately for four years mm. have wanted to believe that there is some very nefarious connection between, say, the Trump administration and Russia. And then we even saw it extend to the Hunter Biden story. Remember, the contents of his laptop and those emails was blamed on Russian disinformation. Rudy Giuliani getting a formal warning about Russian disinformation. Can we drop the Russia narrative already? And look, the American people, to your point, are onto it, Harris. An Axios poll says this, three quarters of Americans believe, quote, traditional major news sources report news they know to be fake, false, or purposely misleading. So yeah. you could say this is either, oh, just human error, or three news, news organizations pushed a narrative they wanted to believe was true. Thank goodness they're not painting everybody with the same brush, so we hope. I'm going to buy some brushes so people see <laughs> that we're not doing that. Uh, Democratic strategist James Carville is continuing to warn that his party will suffer at the polls if they don't distance themselves from wokeness. Watch. We should speak clear, direct English and address people as they address each other, not like the humanities department at Amherst wants you to address everybody. People don't want to live like this, scared to, to address an issue because it, it might come out the wrong way. And it, no one is using their language except for, you know, some of our people on television. If you go to, and if you need wokeness, just go listen to NPR. Oh, wow. <laughs> James Carville has a lot of fire for his own Democrats right now. He does. I can't believe we're 18 years since that appearance in old school, which was tremendous. But look, Carville is from the Clinton era Democrat, which never can get elected on a national level today. Right. That was the Clinton mm -hmm. era that negotiated with Newt Gingrich in terms of getting things done like welfare reform or actually having this thing called a balanced budget, which is a foreign concept. So now we obviously don't see that. And he sees the polls that I see, Harris, a recent Harvard Harris poll. All right. Uh, talked about how 64 percent 
see cancel culture that stems from wokeness as a threat to their freedom, while 54% say they can be, they're very concerned they could be fired if they express the wrong opinion on social media and it's discovered by, say, their coworkers. So think about how close the last election was. Georgia, Arizona, Wisconsin, all within one percentage point. I think in two cases it was 10 or 12,000 votes that decided those states. If those states go in another direction, you may have a different president right now. And James Carville is saying that you want to appeal to the left, go right ahead. But it was independents and primarily those that are maybe even center right that may have helped put Joe Biden into the Oval Office. And they can take him right back out if they see a party so, that's gone so far left, they don't even recognize it anymore. So I want to go a little bit deeper with the limited time that we have on how Republicans respond to all of this. Because what you're saying is, the woke folk want to shut everybody down and win the argument just with silence and, and their own lack of imagination, apparently, because then they don't have to use their big words to debate. But what should be the response to that? that there's got to be a way for winning in response to that. Never back down, never apologize when the mob comes for you, because then you're basically signing your own execution, Harris. I, I think that's it in the end. You can't back down. You have to keep calling this stuff out. And the Carvilles of the world, and Bill Maher has done a great job on this, you're going to see more from the left that I, I guess you could call them left of center, which I, I never thought I'd say about Bill Maher, but he's now that, considering where the party has gone. I think when their mm -hmm. own start to eat themselves, for lack of a better term, then that's when maybe the fire goes out here. But in the meantime, stop thinking that social media is so real that every time something trends, if you're, a, say, a corporation, that you think you're going to be boycotted and the bottom line is going to be affected. Don't back down. Go forward. Never apologize, Harris.